Okay, in this video, I'm going to be doing some more transformations and I'm going to be focusing on the harder kinds of questions where there are multiple things happening at once or often where they ask you to do more than one transformation in a question. So in the previous one, I did everything on enlargements. I'm now going to be doing these multiple transformations and I think there's eight of these questions. So we'll see how many of them we can get done. It says the diagram shows triangle A drawn on a grid and it says Kyle reflects triangle A in the X axis to get triangle B. He then reflects triangle B in the line Y equals X to get triangle C. Amy's going to do some other things and Amy says that they are going to be the same. Is she correct? Well, I tell you what, let's just get started with what Kyle thinks. So now I'm going to do all of Kyle's stuff that we've got here. I'll do it in blue. He's going to re reflect it first of all in the X axis. So I'm going to just draw the X axis and then I'm going to reflect triangle A in there. Now I'm not going to teach you how I'm doing all of these things. I'm just going to kind of explain what I'm doing because to go into the detail would mean this video would become very long. So when we reflect it in the X axis, we get triangle B. And now we're going to reflect triangle B in the line Y equals X. So this line that I've got drawn here is going to be the line Y equals X. Now these ones are a bit trickier to do, but what happens is you're always saying, how do you go from here like perpendicular to this line? And you can kind of figure out where the new points are going to be. So this point that I've got at the top, it is going one, two and a half of those diagonal squares. So it's going to be uh, a half, one and a half, two and a half. So that point is going to be up there. Now, if I do the same for this one, this one is three in this diagonal direction. So it's going to be three over here. And then if I do this one, it is one, two, three and a half diagonals. There's the half and there's the three. So it actually goes to this point up here. Now, some of you might just be able to do this without kind of counting the squares and that's perfectly fine as well. And that gives us triangle C. Now it says Amy reflects triangle A in the line Y equals X. So first of all, this line is gonna to reflect to give you this. And this line, which is coming down here is gonna be across like that. And then my last part are these ones. So that is going to be triangle D for Amy. And then she's gonna reflect triangle D in the X axis to get triangle E. So I'm gonna draw another line that I'm gonna reflect it in here. And we're gonna reflect D to get E. Now it's gonna be all the way down here like this, this, and this, so that we have E here. D has been reflected in that line to get E. Amy says triangle E should be in the same as position C. Is Amy correct? No, so they're clearly not in the same position. So I'm just gonna say no, C and E are not in the same position. They are not in the same position. Okay, this one is a no. The description is a bit harder to see, so I think my method for this is gonna be a bit easier for you to look at. First thing it wants us to do is to rotate, rotate trapezium T 180 degrees about the origin, label the new trapezium A. Well, this one is usually a bit easier to do with tracing paper because you can trace the shape, put your pen on this bit and then do the rotation. So I'm actually just gonna kind of go straight in with what will happen for this. Well, I know it's to do with the origin. So from this point, it's gonna go all the way over to the other side, it's gonna go here and then it's gonna come up. And as it is three down here, it's gonna be three along the top and then it has this little diagonal point and then this bit along here. So I'm gonna kind of get rid of that little extra line that we've got in the middle. That trapezium is going to be A. Now for the next one, it says translate trapezium T by the vector minus one, minus three. This minus one means that it is gonna go one in the negative direction and then it is gonna go three in the down direction. The reason I know that they go in this order is because it's like the alphabet, it goes X, y and you can clearly see the negative values of x are on the left hence it is to the left and the negative values of y are down here so it's clearly showing downwards so to do this concentrate on one of the corners and simply move it one space to the left and then three down one two three so it's going to be at that minus one four all you then need to do is draw the rest of the trapezium which is two spaces here one three and then that little line i'm going to label that b okay only one mark each, and so we've got those coordinates in the right place. This one says, shape T is reflected in the line X equals minus one to give R, and then we do something else to R, and then we're gonna do a description. So I'm gonna begin by drawing the line X equals minus one. Find where X is minus one, and then draw a vertical line through it like this, okay? This is the line X equals minus one. Now when I reflect triangle T here, there's two spaces there, so there'll be two spaces on this side. And when I draw that triangle, 
I am going to label it as triangle R. It then says for the next part of the question, shape R is reflected in the line Y equals minus two. So this time we're gonna look where the Y coordinate is minus two. I'm gonna label that line as Y equals minus two. And I'm gonna reflect this in this line. So when I have, there's three gaps here, there's gonna be three gaps here as well. We end up with triangle S looking like this. And it wants us to now describe the single transformation that will map T onto S. Well, I guess there's a couple of different ways you could think about this. You could either see it as a rotation or you could see it as a, an enlargement with a negative scale factor of negative one. Um, I think I'm probably going to just say that this is a rotation and it happens to be that this is the center of rotation because you can see that journey, sorry, that sort of uh, like mapping, that vector between here and here is the same as that one. What I mean by that is it's two and three up and it's two left and three down. So I'm probably going to say that it is a rotation. It is 180 degrees because it's done 180 degrees in that journey. And I'm going to say that the center is my minus one, minus two. Alternatively, what you could have said is we could say that it is an enlargement. We could say that the scale factor is minus one. And we could say that the center is also minus one, minus two. Let's double check we've got these right. So you could say rotation, 180 about minus one, minus two, or you could say scale factor minus one with center minus one, minus two, if you said that it was an enlargement. Okay, we've got another one where there's multiple things happening. It says triangle P is reflected in the line Y equals minus X to give triangle Q. Well, the line Y equals minus X is this line that we have here. So let me just quickly label that that is Y equals minus X, and we're going to reflect it. So first of all, this point is going to go straight to here. This one is going to come all the way down to here. Good, that's four long, so that's going to be four long. And then that one is these sort of four squares here, so it's going to be one, two, three, four squares here like this. So I'm going to draw that triangle in, and I'm going to label this. You'd probably do it with a ruler to make it look nicer than mine. I'll label that triangle Q. And now it says Q is reflected in the line X equals minus one. So X equals minus one. We're going to draw a vertical line through minus one like this. I'll label that x equals minus 1, and I'm going to reflect q in that so that I end up with a triangle that looks like this. And I'm going to label that one triangle P. No, not P, sorry. I'm going to label that one triangle R. And then it says, describe fully the transformation that maps triangle R to triangle P. Well, it looks like R, to go to P, it's kind of done some sort of rotation. So the first thing I'm going to write down is that it is a rotation. I'm gonna to need to know how much it's rotated. Well, it's usually best to kind of concentrate on one of the sides. This side is vertical and now is horizontal. So it's going to be 90 degrees. And if I'm talking about it rotating in this direction, that is going in the opposite way to the clock. So we would say it is 90 degrees anti-clockwise. The last thing that we need to do is to say the center of rotation. Now the center of rotation is actually going to be here. And it's not because the lines are crossing over, but it's because that distance from there to there is the same. And it would be the same if you drew from here to here. It's the same, they've rotated by 90 degrees. So the center is going to be minus one, one. Let's double check we've got this. Rotation uh, of 90 degrees anti-clockwise, center minus one, one. Okay, here we have got another multiple transformation. Shape A can be transformed to shape B by a reflection in the line X in by a reflection in the x-axis, followed by a translation C D. So the first thing that it says is a reflection in the x-axis. So I'm going to begin by just sort of drawing my mirror line that I've got here for the x-axis, and I'm going to reflect shape A so that it looks like this. So you'll notice it's two away, so it is also two away. And draw that a little bit more neatly. And now what we need to do is just think, how does this shape then become this shape? Well, again, you just concentrate on one of the corners that you've got and you see how that corner moves. Well, that corner is going to go one, two, three, four, five, six left and one down. So it is six left and one down. Now, as a vector, the top number always does left and right because of X and the bottom number always does up and down for Y. Negative numbers are on the left, so that's why it is negative 6. And negative numbers are down, so that's why it's going to be negative 1. 
This means that my value of c is minus 6 and my value of d is minus 1 because I'm just comparing it to this vector we've got here. It's clearly a minus 6 and a minus 1. And there we've got minus 6 and minus 1. Okay, we've got more multiple transformations. This one has got something interesting though. It's got some invariant points at the end. Triangle A is transformed by a combined transformation of a rotation of 180 degrees about the minus, point, minus 2, 0, followed by a translation. So again, I'm going to start off with this. This would be easier if you had, trans, if you had uh, tracing paper, but I'm going to do it without tracing paper. I'm going to begin by thinking about where this point would be. It would come over here. It's then going to be one across, and then it's going these sort of three down and like in this kind of shape that we've got like this. It then says it is followed by a translation with vector minus 3, 2. This means that it's going to go 3 to the left and 2 up. So concentrating on just this corner here, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3 to the left and 2 up. And I'm going to put that corner there, which means I can draw the rest of the triangle. And it's going to be here, here, and then this part. It then says one point on triangle A is invariant, meaning it didn't move at all under the combined transformation. Find the coordinates of this point. Well, clearly the triangle's peak is now down here. That point is over there. And this point on A is now over there. So the only point that hasn't changed at all is bang in the middle of this bit, because it was in the middle of the previous one, and it's now in the middle of this one. So that point there is invariant. Invariant is a posh way of saying that it doesn't move. And the invariant point is going to be, well, that's minus 2, that's minus 3. So I think it's going to be minus 3.51. So the coordinate of this point is minus 3.51. Yep, minus 3.1, minus 3.5 and 1, we've got the right answer. Okay, this one is particularly tricky. It is question 24, which means it's right near the end of the exam paper. But it's only two marks, so you can definitely all get one of these two marks. Square ABCD is transformed by a combined transformation of a reflection in the line x equals minus 1, followed by a rotation. Under the combined transformation, two vertices of the square are invariant. Describe one possible rotation. Okay, well, first of all, let's just do this reflection in the line x equals minus 1. So I'm going to just draw a quick bit of the line x equals minus 1. And then I'm going to reflect the shape. So it's going to be over here. Now, it's interesting to note this line is this line. So I'm actually going to still label the points. This is going to be A and this is D. And then when I go back here, that's going to be C. And then this point at the top is going to be B. Now, if we were going to do a rotation of 180 degrees, because we're going to try and have two of them as invariant, if I was going to rotate it 180 degrees about this point, when it would rotate, the A point would go over there, the D point would go over there, the B point would go over there, and the C point would go over there. None of these matched up, so none of the points are invariant. It needs to be in such a way that two of the vertices, two of the corners of the square, are in exactly the same position. Now, this is very difficult to see this, but the answer to this is that we're going to put the centre of rotation here, and we're going to be rotating. If I kind of draw this line on it, might help it uh, might help you see what's going to happen. We're going to rotate it just 90 degrees, and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees, in the clockwise direction like this. Because what would happen is this D letter that we have here would end up in the same place, and B would also end up in the same place. C, however, would rotate and it would land where A was, and A would rotate and land where C was, meaning only two of the points are invariant. Very, very difficult to spot this. So to describe one possible fully rotation, there are some other ones which I'll show you in the mark scheme. We're going to say that it's a rotation of 90 degrees in the clockwise direction. And the center for this is minus 1, 0, which is this point that I've got marked here. So we've got a rotation of 90 degrees clockwise about minus 1, 0. And there are some other ones that you could possibly try out as well. They've got four different options that all work. But for me, this is the one that kind of just jumps out to have them as invariant points. OK, we've got some more invariant points in this one. It says that triangle P is rotated 180 degrees about the origin to give Q. So I'm actually just going to do that part straight away. And again, if you had tracing paper, 
you should be able to do this a little bit more easily. It's kind of hard for me to explain it without tracing paper. So there's my rotation of 180 degrees about the origin. It then says that Q is translated by this vector that we've got, 5 minus 2. Well, it's 5 in the positive direction and then 2 down. So I'm going to concentrate on one of the corners. I'm going to move 5 across, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 2 down. So I'm at 4 minus 4. Then all I'm going to do is draw the rest of the triangle. So it's got that three down and one across and then the diagonalized part of the hypotenuse that we've got there. And that's going to be triangle R. It then says, describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle P onto triangle R. Well, I think at this point that we've got, there's a couple of different ways of thinking about how P goes on to R. Again, you can think of it as either a rotation or you could think of it as an enlargement. And actually, this is one that is helped by actually drawing on uh, the ray lines that we've talked about before. So if I connect that one to this, and if I connect the peak of the this triangle to the peak of this one, and if I do the same for the bit where the right angles are, you can see that they all are crossing over at this particular point that we've got here. Now that's going to be either the center of rotation or the center of enlargement. You could describe it as a rotation of 180 degrees about this point, or you could alternatively say this. You could say that it is an enlargement. I'm going to this time say enlargement. I'm going to say that it's an enlargement of scale factor minus one, and the center is 2.5 minus one which is this center. Under the transformation that maps P onto R, the point A is invariant. Now, it doesn't have to be a point that's on here. It just has to be a point that is not moving. Well, all of these things, if it were a rotation or an enlargement, everything is kind of shifting around. The only part that's not shifting is the center, and that's true for any enlargement or any rotation. So I'm going to say that the point A is just going to be 2.5 and minus 1. So we have got that it's a rotation of 180 degrees, about 2.5 minus 1. Alternatively, though, we could have said it's an enlargement of scale factor minus 1 with 2.5 and minus 1. And there's that part that we have there. And that's all of the questions that have got these multiple transformations. I think they're pretty tricky. I particularly think this one is quite hard. I think you'd find it a lot easier if you had the papers and stuff in front of you. If you're finding this helpful, um, please do like the video. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel because uh, there's going to be loads more things for revision coming out over the coming weeks as well. Good luck with all your revision.